Hi there, it's Mark back with another thrilling audio tutorial and in this video we're going to start actually having some fun. I want to introduce you to the multi-track in Audition. Up to this point we've only been using the editor and that's fine. It's an important skill to have. If you can get really good at editing then the multi-track part and the mixing part that we're about to step into gets even easier. And mixing actually is where you can really let your creative juices flow and if, for a lot of people this is what is most engaging about audio storytelling is the mix. And in order to get there we need to talk about the multi-track a little bit. So let's head over to Audition and have a look. Uh, so right now we are still in the editor and we know that um, up here, well we know it because this is what it looks like. Um, but here it says waveform or view waveform editor and directly beside it is a button for multi-track. So we can click that and we're presented with this new multi-track session dialog. If we have a session open, it'll merely take us there. And you can go back and forth between the multi-track and the editor. So we're not completely abandoning editing yet, um, but I am going to try to work as linearly uh, as possible, if that's even a word, um, as to not confuse you. So we've prepped all of our materials, our clips, our script, background, sound, all that stuff. I did some of this off camera, uh, so don't, don't think you missed anything. Um, but I have prepped uh, a number of materials in order to build a mix for you as an example. Um, in order to get there, we need to have a session. So new multi-track session, we will hit the browse button as we have been and we will navigate to our desktop, audio lessons for the kiddos, and then we select a folder. Here is where we give it a name and I'm going to um, use my initials um, and then this would be the slug and I'm gonna call it mix um, because this is the stage of the project that I'm in. Later on, I may use the term final, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Important to note here is that the resolution settings of the session need to ma match the resolution settings of the files we're working with. So here it says 44100 as the sample rate. Down here, 48000 is the sample rate of the audio files that we're working with today. So let's just make sure they are the same. Um, Otherwise, we create extraneous files. Aud Audition wants everything to be the same resolution. Uh, it will create temporary copies, thus resulting in a lot of extraneous files. And until you get really comfortable with that, uh, I want to avoid it as much as possible. So uh, just make sure that anything you record uh, is the same sample rate that your session is going to be. And you can change one or the other. It's just easier to change your multi-track to match that of your audio recordings. Uh, one example that I will point out at this juncture is that if you use tape call or other phone recording apps, the sample rate is actually quite low because telephone doesn't require a lot of um, bandwidth. Um, it, the technical term, I guess, would be freaking frequency response, but let's you know, you're not, you're not getting tested on that, so don't worry about it. Uh, 8,000 is just really low quality, but if you've, you know, ever paid attention during a phone call, it's not the greatest quality coming through your earpiece anyway. Um, but on the other hand, who's making phone calls these days? So maybe uh, none of this is relevant. Just be careful that you, if you import a file into your session, um, that, you know, the sample rate is closer to this than this. This is really key. So the lowest I would go here is 44,100. Um, 48,000 is pretty much the current standard. Enough about that. Um, please ask me about that in some of our uh, video chats that you have. Um, happy to talk about this and answer any of your questions. But for now, make this the same as this. We press OK, and here we are on the multi-track. Um, the first thing I like to do is actually go up to the top and make sure that I have my time selection tool selected. This just makes working in this environment a little easier. I find the move tool a little cumbersome, um, but you will see there are shortcuts to go through each of these tools. Um, stick to the time selection tool. I find it really versatile, but I'll leave that with you. 
Uh, you will see on the left, um, we have our session, um, but we also have a number of audio files. Uh, you can left click and drag an audio file into the multi-track and you will see that the waveforms are here. This is one of the uh, files that I've recorded off camera just uh, to save some time. Uh, it's a really cheesy script. You'll get to hear it. Um, but we also have some sound effects, which I'll put here. And uh, we've got some clips and things. But the way the multi-track works is that at any point in time, if you have what is called a block, um, blocks contain audio. Uh, any point in time that you have a block or two blocks, or in this case, we could go five. Actually, um, I can stretch this out. We have six tracks available to us right off the bat. Um, you can have six sounds playing simultaneously. Uh, it, I mean, unlikely that you would. That's a lot of sounds. Uh, it can sort of become cacophony at that, at that point. Um, but it's not very, it's not unreasonable to expect you to have voice with ambient sound uh, or even music in the background. Um, but in this example here, I used uh, just some wind noise from the parking lot at King's College. So let's hear what that sounds like. This is the, the most basic mix that you can do. Um, space bar. That sound you're hearing is the back parking lot at King's College. I told you it was going to be cheesy. Just get at me in the comments section if uh, you want to have a laugh uh, or have a go at me. I really don't mind. Um, and if I move this block out of the way, I'm just left clicking and dragging it out of the way. Now you can hear no sound. That sound you're hearing is the back parking lot at King's College. And you can sort of see where this is going. Uh, and that's basically it. You move the blocks around to, you know, bring in elements or move out elements. Uh, in this, we can also change the volume, uh, which is which is pretty simple. We just left click on the yellow line and we can pull it down, uh, so we can have, you know, foreground and background elements um, controlled via simple volume controls. That sound you're hearing is the back parking lot at King's College. Paul Robinson is a broadcast technician for video, and that's and that's mixing. Uh, we will touch on this and more things in more detail in the next video, and I suppose that's uh, that's how I land the plane for this one. I'll see you in the next one.